Goblins, and welcome to Darkwood Fantasy Creatures. My name's Aileen, and this is a very unexpected project indeed, but one I had a lot of fun with regardless. What do I mean by unexpected? Well, I mean I was conditioning clay and started messing around, and was quite pleased with the end result, so I decided to turn it into its own doll. It made me really nostalgic for when I first started creating creatures. Back then, I used to just sculpt with no rhyme or reason or reference, just having fun until I was happy with the end result. Speaking of rhymes with no reason, I'm sure you've been able to tell already from the title of the video and the illustration at the start of it what today's project is going to be. If I could have made you mine, wait in that eternal life. I had a lot of different avenues I could have taken for the cow's design, from a zodiac inspired doll, maybe even a regional variant of Taurus from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, or having seen KP Creation's adorable Mooshroom doll, maybe even a Moo Bloom or a Moo Lip. But instead I went with the classic children's rhyme, hey diddle diddle, the cat and the fiddle, the cow jumped over the moon. And I am taking the moon and celestial inspiration very seriously and painting her blue and embellishing her with little stars and moons. Cosplay is already quite porous, so you don't really need to prime it beforehand, but you can if you want to. That said, regardless, it's quite easy to build up colour. Using acrylic paint cut with water, I build up the colours I want on her face before sealing with matte varnish and glossing areas like her eyes and nose. And I also decorated her forehead using these little metal stars and these little sequins? I'm not sure what to call them, I know they're used for nail art. Glitter? Well, whatever they are, I just had to use them. Look at the sparkle. When you're here, when you're gone. For her ear tag, I used the sharp end of my tweezers and punctured a hole in the cosplay and threaded a jump ring through it with one of these little moon charms. Now using the same acrylic paint cut with water method we used for the face, we paint the hooves. And I applied a little bit of gold using my Citadel metallic paints before sealing with matte varnish. And we repeat the same steps for the others, and I'm pretty certain that by making these I have officially peaked as an artist. That's all folks, you can go home. Now with the painting out of the way, let's move on to the body. Using a thin galvanised wire, I twist it into the shape that I want, and I added a bit of support to the joints using warbler thermal plastic. Then, using strips of quilt wadding, I wrap it around the frame to bulk up the shape. Once they're done, they should look like this. Now we move on to sewing the body. 
I've yet to come up with a way to adequately describe my pattern making process, so until I do, my best advice is to just lay it down on a piece of paper and trace it with some seam allowance. But once they're all sewn up, you should have a cotton ball with a face. And after a much needed haircut, they should look like this. Using a needle and thread, I also added a bit of definition to their rump, hump and neck. And after being airbrushed, they should look like this. In place of a bell, I filled a mini glass bottle with some mermaid bubbles and golden stars and tied it to her neck with some gold trim and chain. But first, let's move on to the cat and the fiddle. I removed his moulded on hair and face off camera, but why does he look like a kid model from Skyrim? Hi there. Before we work on his hair and face, let's work on his outfit. I hand stitched a bunch of squares of this silk dupioni together and I also embellished it with these moon face appliques and stitched on this beautiful metallic purple fabric before lining with this blue silk dupioni. And I embellished it with these little metal findings, ribbons, and bells. For the rest of his outfit, I used the clothes he came with as a pattern and stitched these together. And I also embellished them with chains and other findings. And of course, I also gave him his own little mermaid star bottle. Using two part epoxy sculpt, I filled in the gaps within his head, and using warbler thermal plastic, I gave him the base for his ears. For his face up, I used watered down acrylic paint, Mungio soft pastels, and Faber Castells watercolor pencils. One black rock in the dark. Smooth stone knows just what your body's worth. And while I had the paint out, I also added some dimension to his shin guards and painted the shoes he came with to match his outfit. With his outfit all done, let's dress him up. I also found this tiny spoon to add to his belt, but sadly I couldn't find a dish to go with it. Nor could I find a little dog that enjoyed laughing. Also, if you guys are wondering about how I did his hair, I followed Mizeki Toe's tutorials. I'll pop a link to her channel in the description of this video. Blue 
Now with them all dressed up, let's make his fiddle. And with all that out of the way, let's dress him up and call them done. This doll set was a lot more cartoonish than my usual style, but overall I still had a lot of fun while making it. I was very much inspired by the little golden books that I had growing up as a child. The illustrations in them were very simple but very charming at the same time. And it feels very fitting to finish off such a chaotic year with such an unexpected doll. This year has been full of so many twists and turns that I'm just glad that it's over. But with that said, say hello to Berlioz, the cat with the fiddle, and Moon, who jumped over the moon. Also special thank you to Fildel for letting me use her music in today's video. I'll pop a link to her iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and all of her socials in my description box below. Her songs are just so beautiful and her latest music, Into the Woods, Monolith and Fires are out now. And of course, I hope you all had a wonderful holiday season and good luck in the new year. Thank you.